I, I truly believe that thoughts are the greatest vehicle to change power and success in the world. Everything begins with thoughts. Your words become your reality. You are where you are today in part because of what you've been saying about yourself. Words are like seeds. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. And this is great when we're saying things like, I'm blessed, I'm strong, I will accomplish my dreams, I'm coming out of debt. That's not just being positive, you are prophesying victory, prophesying success, prophesying new levels. Your life will move in the direction of your words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. I never get any good breaks. I'll never get back in shape. Business is slow. I'll probably get laid off. Flu season is here. I always get it. They don't realize they are prophesying defeat. It's just like they're calling in bad breaks, mediocrity, lack. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead, and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. So the first thing you have to do is you have to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts. You have to notice your automatic habits and behaviors. And you have to become aware of your emotions that keep you anchored to the past. And if you can become so conscious of the un unconscious states of mind and body that they would never slip by your conscious awareness again, you're becoming familiar with the old self so you don't return. Then if you begin to think about new ways of being, being defined by a vision, plan your behaviors, review them in your mind, now, if you keep doing that over and over again, you begin to become familiar with a new state of mind. At the same time, if you can emotionally cultivate your inspiration, your joy, your enthusiasm ahead of the experience, by repeating that over and over again, cultivating that state, it's going to begin to become familiar to you. So then the process of change then requires unlearning and relearning, breaking the habit of the old self, reinventing in yourself unmemorizing emotions that are stored in the body, then here's the key, reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. It's literally moving from your past to your future. It's losing your mind and creating a new one. And so then when you begin to understand that in, the, in that process, it's going to feel a little bit unfamiliar, uh, uncomfortable. And if you can relax into that, instead of going back to the past, continuously invest in your future, sooner or later, it'll begin to become easier and easier and easier. And all of a sudden, when you least expect it, something amazing is going to happen in your life. And when that event begins to occur, you're going to pay attention to what you did inside of you now to produce the effect outside of you. And that's called human empowerment. And there isn't a person in the world that's excluded from this equation. Someone's watching this and they have a thing that something they want to change um, and it's not, it's not sticking. Then maybe it's not it's the environment, maybe you could check about your habits, but maybe it's your beliefs and your values. Some people will not get themselves to read every day because they don't value reading every single day, right? Some people won't, let's say the behavior they want to change is, you know, we did a podcast on how to remember names. I could teach them step by step on how to remember the name of most people that they meet, um, yet they won't do it because they don't value it or because that's not important to them or they don't believe that they can, right? Just like we talked about earlier, saying your brain is like a supercomputer and, and you know, your self-talk is a program that runs. If you tell yourself not to remember your names, you want to remember the name of the next person you meet because your program is a supercomputer not to. They don't have a belief that enables that. So when I say all behavior is belief-driven, if you want to do this behavior, whatever it is, journal, whatever it is, then you need a belief that allows that to happen because you, that's the program that allows. How do you get that belief? Because you're going to feel like you're faking it. Right, that's where most people stop, right? They, they think, okay, I get it, I hear what Jim is saying, that if I am able to shift my belief that I can get a different behavior, but I don't believe it, you know, so now I'm just sort of faking it. 
how do you help people overcome that? Right, and so you, I mean, so some people approach it like they you know this quote where they they fake it till they make it, right? right. Um, and so my my thing with belief is like when I do the trainings in groups or online, my my favorite way of changing a belief is getting them to do something they never thought they could do because it opens up another possibility. So, so for example, in, in 1954, Roger Bannister, he broke the four minute mile, right? And so, which is amazing, right? Throughout human history, nobody could run a mile in less than four minutes. Now, if you, if you look into it, how he was able to do it is he would visualize himself crossing the finish line, looking at the clock, and it says 359. Because he knew that success is an inside out process, that first it had to happen in here, in order for it than out there, right? Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer has, is, has a famous phrase where it's not, oh, I'll believe it when I see it, it's like, I'll see it when I believe it, right? because it's the opposite, right? And so I, I always like modeling the outliers where most people kind of just like, kind of dismiss them. I was like, well, what, what's going on there that allows this person to get this kind of result, right? And so with Roger Bannister, he saw it in here, be able to produce it outside, just like any innovator or inventor or writer or any creator, right? But what was interesting is after that, what happened? Nobody could do it from the beginning of humanity. All of a sudden, one person does it. What happens after that? Everybody. Yeah, everyone starts doing it. And so that's the thing. Now, what, what, what happened? Was there a big change that year in you know, training methodology and nutrition? Or No, it was a change of belief, right? Because the belief back then was if you ran a mile less than four minutes, not only would you die, it was your heart would explode in your chest. And like, think about it, like that would, and I'm a runner, right? That would keep me, not just running, that wouldn't keep me from running for me, that would keep me from running, period, right? right? And so my, my thing is like, that was a change of a reference. I was just, that shook up a belief. So my goal with people when it comes to learning is get themselves to do something they never thought they could do. And then it opens up another possibility. It literally opens up their, their nervous system for something, what else could be possible. When I grew up, I, you know, we, we didn't have any, we, we had no money. Right, I had no education because that was a very learning challenge. I didn't know any anybody. Right, so I feel like it's not when people are. That's where they'll go though. When they when they when there's a gap, stop gap between where they are and where they want to be, they'll say, "Oh, I don't have the money, or I don't have the education, or I don't need intelligence, I don't have the network, or anything else like that." And you know what? What you know as for all incredible success you've had and the value you've created for the world is that it's not about resources, right? Because we know a lot of people who who didn't have any resources that were able to impact the world. Um, it's about our internal resources. And what I'm saying is optimizing our environment, optimizing our behaviors, our capabilities, our beliefs and our values, and our identity, right? That, that the highest level, our identity, because you can't just change your belief or your values or your behavior even if you don't believe you're that kind of person. You know, that's why I kind of always go to the superhero mythos, because I, I want people to, to claim that identity. I call it the superhero you, that version of ourselves, that we're not waiting for Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman. It's like, you are Wonder Woman, you are Batman, you are Superman. It's just we, we have to commit ourselves to be able to unleashing. Just starting there and being able to reflect and observe the different voices inside of us is a great place to start your self-awareness. Because the biggest challenge is that most of us don't know what we're listening to. And we don't, most of us don't even know that there are more than one voice inside of us. Just getting over that line is a huge win. Because now at least you're trying to differentiate between what you're hearing. And that's going to help you make better decisions in the future. There are many ways to get the things that we want for ourselves in our lives. But basically, it all begins with how we choose to think. As you think, so shall you be. Seven little words that I think are perhaps the most important things that we can learn and master in our lives. This old proverb notion that I become what I think about all day long. And once you know that what you think about is what expands, you start getting real careful about what you think about. You don't allow your thoughts to be on anything that you don't want, or that you wouldn't want to have manifest or show up for you in your life. Let me tell you something. How many of you have things when you want to go achieve them and this part of your voice goes, oh, it's not going to happen or forget it. And we got a voice that sometimes interrupts that good pattern, say I am. And what you want to do is train a new one. So starting when I was 17, I started doing incantations, not affirmations. 
Affirmation to go, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. What's the problem? You haven't changed your what? Your what? Physiology. If you don't change your physiology, you won't get anything. So an incantation is not only you speak it, but you embody what you're saying with all the intensity you can. And you do it with enough repetitions that it sticks in your head. Like it's a small world, now the conversation in your head is always the same and it gives you what you want. So you use your body and your voice. So 17 years ago, I started doing things. I was working for Jim Rohn, this speaker. When I was 17 years old. I had long hair, minestrone soup, acne on my face. I was trying to call on Bear Stearns type of people and convince them why they should go to this man's seminar and be more successful. I was driving a 1968 Volkswagen and I had earned it $40 a week as a janitor. The only way I did it was park far from the building and then go in and I love people and I believe when I put myself in state and I was able to influence people that were far more successful than I was at the time. I will do something that I still do backstage and have done for 23 years because I don't hope I'm going to be in a good state, I demand it. So I do an incantation using my whole body and say, I now command my subconscious mind to direct me in helping as many people as possible live today to better their lives by giving me the strength, the emotion, the persuasion, the humor, the brevity, whatever it takes to show these people and get these people to change their lives now. And I would do that literally driving in my Volkswagen to a meeting in LA on the freeway for 40 minutes. People are looking at me, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. They're going, I know he's a serial killer, I know he is. But by the time I entered that room, when two people meet, if there's rapport, the person who's most certain will always influence the other person. And I was totally certain, and they were trying to get revved up to certainty. Do you agree with this, yes or no? I do another one because I was poor, I changed my mindset. I kept doing things, but I never got beyond it. I'd say God's wealth is circulating in my life, his wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are met instantaneously by infinite intelligence, where I'm one with God and God is everything. And I would imagine the abundance of my life and I would feel so grateful. And a year later I went from making $38,000 a year to making a million dollars a year in one year.